action. So welcome everybody. Those of you who have signed up for the right or wrong series, we have a gift and a surprise for you. Yay. <laughs> who doesn't like gifts and surprises? <laughs> Some people don't surprisingly, but um, so we were just looking at the energy of this class and so many um, people didn't know that this series was about this book. <laughs> So, and everyone was looking for the series about this book. So what we decided to do today is actually just do like kind of a free intro. And so um, those of you that have purchased the series, this is a bonus call for you. There are people who will be on this call who haven't yet purchased the series, but if you guys want to come for the whole series, we're going to have five calls on this lovely, amazing book. Um, and um, yeah, I'm also, so you guys are welcome to one, join the series, but those of you that are in the series, um, this is your bonus call. So we will have a fifth call on top of this one, just so you know. How does it get any better? So you really get six calls. <laughs> so welcome those of you that are here. My name is Catherine McIntosh and um, we are gonna have a conversation based on the book, um, written by Gary Douglas, who's the founder of Access, Projections, Expectations, Separations, um, Judgments, and Rejections. And so those of you, I think most of you know, my name's Catherine McIntosh. I'm an Access Consciousness Certified Facilitator. I've been facilitating going on eight years. And all I know is that for 20 plus years, I was seeking something different in my life. I was seeking ease, I was seeking magic, I was seeking energy, I was seeking, and so I tried just about everything, right? I tried everything from hypnosis to shamanism to blindfold dancing in the jungles to submerging myself in water for like under three, like three minutes at a time, holding my breath, hope, hoping that something would happen. And um, I also went to grad school for somatic psychology to figure out how uh, the psychology of the body worked. And when I found the tools of access consciousness, uh, my whole life changed. And even though I resisted how happy facilitators who facilitate this work were, I was like, they're too happy. Something must be wrong with them. This is too easy. Um, eight years later, I realized that life can be easy and it can be an adventure and it can be fun. And for the last three years, Gary's been telling me personally to read this book as much as possible. <laughs> and after reading this, I don't know, the third or the fourth or fifth time, it's like there is so much that we do to function from projections, expectations, separations, judgments, and rejections, and it's really, truly insane. So today we're going to go on an adventure. You guys are welcome to comment in the chat. You're welcome to ask a question out loud. You're welcome to, um, you know, really just dive into it. So my question to each of you is if you had absolutely no need to figure anything out. I'm going to ask that again. <laughs> if you had no need to figure anything out, what would you desire to choose? And so is it at all real to any of you that you spend the majority of your time trying to figure things out? Does it ever work out the way in your head you figured it would? <laughs> right? And so if it doesn't work out the way you think it would, you go into your head and you go, oh, was I right about that choice or was I wrong about that choice? And then when you're in right or wrong, you're stuck in judging yourself for your choices or judging yourself for going, oh, I must have gotten my awareness wrong. Aha. Can you ever get your awareness wrong? 
no nope. so we're going to use the access consciousness clearing statement if you have no idea what that is welcome if you'd like to check out what it is after this video then go to theclearingstatement.com or go check out accessconsciousness.com but everything you've done to try to figure out your future to try to figure out your scenarios, to try to figure out how to talk to your mom, to try to figure out how to deal with your difficult children, to try to figure out how to make more money, does figuring it out ever work? So everything that is times a godzillion, we destroy and uncreate it, please. Whew, right, wrong, good, bad, pock, pod, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. So that's the clearing statement designed to get you out of your head and into your awareness. Yeah. So Ola says, wow, it's easier to figure out what I want rather than really looking at what I've decided as good or bad or successful or right or right and seeing the lies behind it and choose different. Exactly. You guys, anywhere you're figuring something out, is that a lie? Is it a projection? Is it a rejection? Is it a separation? Yeah, all of the above <laughs> and more. And so whenever we're functioning from projections, expectations, separations, judgments, and rejections, we aren't being in the present moment of possibility. So everything that is and everything that, I don't know why I'm still holding this book up, but everything that is and everything that doesn't allow you to know, be, perceive, and receive the possibilities, will you destroy and uncreate it, please? Oh, right, wrong, good, bad, pock, pot, all nine shirts, boys and So Lindsay's asking, what if something happens that goes against what your awareness said? Well, is it going against what your awareness said or is it just showing up different? And so it's a great question, Lindsay, because guess what? There's no right answer here, right? We so badly, we're like, tell us the answer. <laughs> tell us what to choose, <laughs> right? Like Kathy, for example, was looking at moving. And last week we looked at it and she's like, well, it's light to move, but there's nowhere to go. And so she made a choice to not. And it's like, awesome. That is a choice that opens up a different possibility. Every time we choose, it's not a right choice or, or a wrong choice. And so if it goes against what your awareness said, I would say that's not really your awareness. That's a projection of how you wanted it to show up. And I might need more specifics, Lindsay, if you want, like, if you can give me more specific, then I can facilitate. But if it's not too specific, then I'm not sure what you're talking about. Yeah, and Kathy says, I'm making myself wrong still for not moving. So when, when we make ourselves wrong for a choice we made, can that choice create a different possibility? No, and this is what we were talking about this morning on Feel Your Future, is what will happen is you'll actually, you'll, you'll not be able to receive when a different possibility shows up because you can't see it. So when we're making ourselves wrong, can you be wrong about you and simultaneously receive the gift you are? Nope. Everything that is times a godzillion. We destroy and uncreate it, please. <laughs> right, wrong, good, bad, pock, pot, all nine shorts, boys, and beyonds. Cool. Yeah, so Marta's saying, I often mess up my projections with others. Well, here's the deal, my friends. A projection is you not being willing to be aware of what you're aware of. And here's what's crazy is if you decide you like someone, you cannot be aware when they are doing something that isn't for you. Okay. I'm going to say that again. When you like somebody, 
you cannot be aware of when they are choosing something that goes against you. Everything that is, times a godzillion, we destroy and uncreate it, please. Right, wrong, good, bad, pock, pot, all nine shorts. So everywhere you guys have decided you like anyone in your life, including your spouse, including your significant other, will you destroy and uncreate everywhere you've decided you like them? Wow. Everything that is, times a godzillion, will you destroy and uncreate it, please? Right, wrong, good, bad, pock, pod, all nine shorts, boys, man. So what if you were willing to be okay with not liking for 10 seconds the person you're in relationship with? So ready? Choose to like them and look at your future. Everything that is, and look, you guys, this could be a significant other, this could be a business partner, this could be a friend, this could be your grandchildren. It doesn't matter. Yes, only 10 seconds, Joyce. You just have to do it for 10 seconds. So choose for 10 seconds to, to not like your spouse or your significant other or your friend or your boss. Choose to, someone that you really like. Choose to not like them for 10 seconds. And look at your future by choosing to not like them. Okay, we're going to destroy and uncreate that. Right, wrong, good, bad, pock, pot, all nine shorts. Boys. Now for 10 seconds, choose to just love the shit out of them. Like them, adore them, have gratitude for them. And look at your future by choosing to like them. Isn't that fascinating? That is the energy of a projection. Because if you like them, do you project that they won't do anything against you? Marta says both are heavy. Awesome, Marta. So keep pot and pocking all of the decisions, judgments, conclusions, and computations you have about liking someone. And all the decisions, judgments, conclusions, computations you have about not liking someone. Welcome, you guys. We are exploring a taste of this. So I'm also, um, yeah. So I'm also on Facebook Live, just in a private group. Those of you, I think most of you are part of No Judgment Party. So there's a couple people hopping on the No Judgment Party. Hi, guys. Um, and we're talking about projections, rejections. Projections, expectations, separations, judgments, and rejections. Yes. Awesome. So Kathy says it's so much more ease I'm perceiving for liking them. That's interesting. I, when I'm willing to not like someone who I really like, I can see more choices for my future. When I need to like them, I see less choices for my future. So how many of you need to like those, how many of you need to like the people in your life to create your future? Wow. So how many of you like you in order to create your future? Or have you had the need to not like you in order to create your future? Hi, buddy. Can you say hi to everyone? Hi. <laughs> I bet. I can run your bars after, yes. I love when he asks. So cool. Yeah. So... Deborah says, yes, liking is my first go-to as well. Right. So do you need to like someone to create the future you'd like to create? <laughs> A little bit. <laughs> Everything that is times a godzillion, we destroy and uncreate it, please. Right, wrong, good, bad, pock, pod, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Very, very cool. So do you need to like someone in order to create the future you'd like to create? You don't, but if you decide you need to like them, what are you limiting in terms of what you could receive? 
Wow. 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 Cool. So Deborah says, I know it's a no, but I would like to destroy it. Yes. Yeah, so, so are you trying to get people to like you, Deborah? Okay. How many choices do you have for your life and living if you need people to like you? Holy mother of God. Do you guys get that if you need someone to like you, you limit your choices? Then you can only what? Be nice to them. <laughs> Everything that is times a godzillion. Will you destroy and uncreate it, please? Right, wrong, good, bad, pock, pod, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. So Wendy says, no, there may be someone unknown coming to help me create my future. Say more. What do you mean by that? The door's broken. Is it locked? No, it's like literally broken. Okay, well, I'll, close. I'll fix it later. Um, so it just popped into my head while you were asking that question, you know, do you like to be liked and what have you? And it's like, there's possibly someone out there that will connect with me that will help me. And I, it's totally unknown. Yeah. And I'm willing to have that. Yeah. Well, and something I've noticed and I'm looking at it, right. Heather says shit balls, right? There's something I've noticed. Like, do I need my clients to like me in order to create a greater future for them? No, no but if I need them to like me and I have a possibility to change their world that looks like me, not them, not liking me, like I say to people, you might not like me through this process. I say that in my live events. But if I need someone to like me, then how much am I limiting all the possibilities I can choose from? And so I recently have been looking at, oh my God, up until like I think it was like yesterday or the day before I needed the people I was in relationship with to like me do I actually need them to like me to create the future I'd like to have no yeah Heather says she's on Facebook there's a shit ton around being liked exactly so Everything you've done to cut off your awareness. So how about this? What judgments, agendas, inventions, and lies are you using to create the dominance of evil, mediocrity, and con corruption squared as the need to be liked? Yeah, just that. As the need to be liked, are you choosing? Everything that is times a godzillion, we destroy and uncreate it, please. Right, wrong, good, bad, pock, pot, all nine shorts, boys, and And Tracy says, oh my gosh, right? Yes, being liked is massive. Then I go into separation if I'm not liked. And so check this out. Then this is projections, expectations, separations, judgment. If you need someone to like you, and you're like, I need them to like me. I need them. I'm going on a first date. I need them to like me. I need them to like me. I need them to like me. You will cut off all of you and only show pieces of you that match being liked. And then if they walk away not liking you, you will go into the wrongness of you and separate from all of you and make yourself wrong. But guess what? You didn't show up as all of you in the first place. Woo -woo. <laughs> so everything that is times a godzillion, we destroy and uncreate it, please. Right, wrong, good, bad, pock, pod, all nine shorts, boys, man. So let's do a little bit of an exercise. You guys with me? Want to do something to get out of this projection, expectation, separation, judgment, rejection? So say hi to your body for a second. And allow, say hi to the earth. 
and allow your body to receive everything it can, like all of your awareness that you have of the earth. Okay. So can you separate from the earth? Not really, but you can try. Does the earth ever separate from you? No. So now say hi to all of your creations and all of the people in your life, whether they're in your life or not. There you go. And don't separate. Does that make sense? Is that way lighter? Yeah. So like Heather saying, just acknowledging being undefinable, it's difficult for people to like me and I've been making myself wrong for it. Yeah. How many of you guys make yourselves wrong? Like, can you define the earth? Can you define the universe? And are you as a humanoid more similar to the earth and the universe than you are to a human body? Does that make sense? Right, so can you as a humanoid be definable? But how many of you are trying to define who you are to get people to like you? Oh, dear Lord, everything that is times a godzillion. We destroy and uncreate it, please. Right, wrong, good, bad, pock, pod, all nine shorts, boys, and beyonds. Right. Pia says, aha, exactly. Exactly. So Tracy is asking, what questions can you ask if you don't like you? It all becomes very twisted. Well, do you need you do you need to like you to create your future? Or do you what would it be like if you were in allowance of you in order to create your future? Do you see how like has judgment attached to it? Do you need to like the earth in order to have gratitude for it? Nope. Do you, yeah. Kathy says, love the allowance for me. And Kathy, if you didn't go into the wrongness of your choice not to move, what are you moving that you're not acknowledging? <laughs> she says what <laughs> yeah social media is driven all about likes and so if you didn't go into the wrongness of your not moving what are you actually moving that you could receive You might be moving your entire universe to a different reality. But if you're focused on, oh my God, I didn't move locations in terms of houses or states, and you go into the wrongness of that, will you separate from the future you're creating by not moving? So my friends, every judgment you have is a separation from the future you'd like to create. I'm going to say that again because that's a meme. Every judgment you have is a separation from the future you'd like to create. Yes, Rita, you are so welcome. She says, OMG, thank you for that. You guys, no choice is a wrong choice. And, and here's the deal. Kathy was aware of wanting to move. And she thought that it was supposed to be a move to another state like right now, but now might not be the time. I mean, fuck, we're in COVID. Like, not that that has to be a reality, but you, there might be a wisdom in not moving that you can't see yet. 
Awesome. I love you guys. <laughs> cool. So you guys have to look at, and this is from Gary in the book. He says, you want to be willing to look at, you know, what's most valuable to you is being right with your point of view valuable or is having the freedom to choose valuable. So how many of you right now recognize that up until this conversation, you being right was valuable? What if the freedom to choose is more valuable than being right? Everything that doesn't allow that times a godzillion, we destroy and uncreate it, please. Right, wrong, good, bad, pock, pot, all nine shorts, boys. And so the reason that we called this series right or wrong is because when you're living from projections, expectations, separations, judgments, and rejections, you can't be free to choose. You are in the judgment of what's right and what's wrong. And Gary said for years, would you rather be right or would you rather be free? And so I'm using Kathy's move as an example. She thought that moving now would create more freedom. What if not moving is the freedom she's been asking for? Which I know sounds crazy, but when you get free here, it doesn't matter where you live. Awesome. What else is possible? Yeah. So um, Heather saying on Facebook, she says, destroy and uncreate all the childhood crap around, around be nice and be being liked. So I'll give you guys an example. Um, I have a friend in my life and my son is like, mommy, do I have to like him? And I was like, no, actually you don't have to like him. And he's like, I don't have to like him. I was like, nope. Just because I like him doesn't mean you have to. And he went, oh, and I said, if he's not being nice to you, you don't need to be nice to him. And it gave him so much freedom to not have to align and agree with my choice of who I like and his choice of who he wants to like or not like. But as children, we're not taught to think for ourselves. So. Wow. Wow. So how many of you are still functioning from your parents' likability meter? I don't know why that's reading the way it does, but how many of you are still functioning from who your parents like or don't like or fitting in or not fitting in or having to align and agree or your points of views about people, like Everything that is times a godzillion, we just join on credit, please. Right, wrong, good, bad, pock, pot, all nine shirts, boys and yards. So Nicole is saying, ouch, 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 not taught to think for ourselves. Exactly. And that, my friends, is when you're not taught to think for yourselves, you will function from everybody else's point of view. Wow. Right, wrong, good, bad, pock, pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. I love you guys. Okay, so I'm going to read a clearing from Mr. Gary from the book. And it's, what have you made so vital about projections, expectations, separations, judgments, and rejections that keeps you separating, judging, and rejecting awareness? Everything that is, times a godzillion. We destroy and uncreate it, please. Wow. Right, wrong, good, bad, pock, pod, all nine shorts, boys, and beyonds. I'm going to read that again. Is that all right? And if not, tough shit, because I don't need to be liked by you. <laughs> okay, so what have you made so vital about projections, expectations, separations, judgments, and rejections that keeps you separating, judging, and rejecting awareness? Everything that is times a godzillion. We destroy and uncreate it, please. Oh, right, wrong, good, bad, pock, pod, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. And so my dear, amazing humanoid friends, if you were not separating from your awareness, 
what would be available for you to choose. If you weren't separating from your awareness, because you guys, if you're trying to get it right, can you have your awareness? If you think you're wrong, can you have your awareness? So this is what's crazy is, is what would your life be like? Cause here's what's happened. Me, the last week of my life is everything in my life is different. And I literally do not know who I am. And so I'm literally having to look and go, is, is this choice light or heavy? Yes. Am I going to get it wrong? Who cares? <laughs> like what, like, and I say this to people, when I go to facilitate a class, one of the first questions I ask is how much fun can I have fucking this up? When I go for an interview, how much fun can I have fucking this up? When I go to meet a new client, how much fun can I have fucking this up? Not how do I get it right? Because right requires judgment and you can't have your awareness and judgment simultaneously. So let me run that clearing one more time. What have you made so vital about projections, expectations, separations, judgments, and rejections that keeps you separating, judging, and rejecting awareness? Everything that is times a godzillion. We destroy and uncreate it, please. Right, wrong, good, bad, pock, pod, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. So guess what, my friends? If you have no projections, expectations, separations, judgments, and rejections, you can actually be happy. <laughs> but don't choose that. That would be very bad because then people would judge you for being too happy. They would think something's wrong with you because you're too happy. So Lindsay's asking, what's the difference between fucking it up and getting it wrong? Because if you fuck it up, you wouldn't get what you went for. Well, that's the whole thing. If I'm trying to get what I want, can I ever get what I want if I'm trying to be right? So the difference between fucking it up, I know I always twist your brain. You're welcome, Pia. <laughs> Um, so if you, if, if I go in, like how much fun can I have fucking this up? Is there a judgment that I'm going to get it wrong? No. Is there a judgment that I need to be right? No, it's more just like, okay, let me show up and see what it creates. So I'm going to say this in Spanish. Marta is asking, um, ¿Habrá traducción en este programa de llamadas um, en español? <laughs> and so she's asking if there's going to be translation for these calls. So unfortunately, we decided not to have translation because it's not, tra this book isn't translated in Spanish or um, Hungarian, which are currently the two languages that most of our classes are translated in. So um, for now, I don't believe, if, if we had six people that said yes to choosing it, we would translate it in Spanish or in Hungarian, but currently we don't. So Marta, if you wanna bring five of your friends, then possibly we can look at translating it, but for now we don't have it translated. So, Going back to Lindsay's question about the difference between fucking it up and getting it wrong, fucking it up, is there a judgment there? Some of you are saying yes. I'm like, mm -mm, not for my world. But most of you have fucking it up as a wrongness in your world. I do not have the point of view that if I fuck it up, I'm wrong. Everything that is times a godzillion. We destroy and uncreate it, please. Right, wrong, good, bad, pock, pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Right, Kathy says we've defined it as wrong. So here's an example. 
and then we're, we're going to wrap it up. So has anyone ever had the experience of someone that you're having sex with and they're trying to get it right? How much fun is having sex with somebody who's trying to get sex with you right? Okay, it's not very fun. But if you're with someone and they're like, I don't know what I'm doing, I might totally fuck it up, but can we play? That's a really different energy than trying to get it right. So everything that doesn't allow that, times a godzillion, we destroy and uncreate it, please. Right, wrong, good, bad, pock, cod, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Yeah, allowance. Allowance is how much fun can I have fucking this up? There's no judgment there. It's more just like a play of possibilities. So for 10 seconds, look at the energy, hi sweetness, look at the energy of fucking up your business. How much fun can I have fucking it up? Is it light or heavy? For some of you, it's heavy. For me, I'm like, oh my God, that's actually pretty light. Now, look at the energy of your business and try to get it right. Which one's heavier? Right? Hi, Catherine, can I ask you a question? Of course you can. <laughs> Hi, sorry. I'm Maria, Marisol's daughter. Awesome. <laughs> Hi, Maria. <laughs> um, now that you're talking about business and getting it right, um, how would you stop feeling separation with your business? Aha! That is a great question. How would you stop separating from your business? <laughs> So do you have, so do you currently have a business? Yes. And yes, are, you, are you projecting onto your business what you expect from it? Yes, definitely. So how much do you separate from what it would like to be in the world with your expectations? Okay, okay. a lot. <laughs> So what you can ask, this is my favorite question to ask, which is, um, I'm going to give you for a second, Maria, because it was great. So hold on one second, and then you can come back off a of mute. But one of the questions you can ask is, what energy, space, and consciousness does my business desire to be in the world that I'm not letting it be? That is a question that in that moment that I'm asking that question, I can't actually separate from my business because I'm inviting my business to show me what it desires to be in the world. If I have a conclusion, and actually I was just talking to Michelle about this right before the call, because the business, our business is currently totally changing. And so I'm going, fuck, okay. What else is possible? Because the old me wanted to figure it out, project, expect, like look at income, look at expenses. And now it's like, well, what does it want to create? And we're asking the business to show us what it wants to create. So when you ask the business to show you what it wants to create and you listen, without a point of view, what's possible? And this is the thing, you guys, we are not taught to function from business in this way. This reality tells us the opposite. This reality says set targets, set goals, set income, set, like, look at your expenses. And it tells you, but it never says, hey, business, like, do each of your businesses have a consciousness of their own? Even those of you that don't yet have a business, if you have a body, you're in the business of creating your life. 
I'm going to say that again. If you have a body, you're in the business of creating your life. And so what does your business desire to be in the world that you're not letting it be? And then Maria, you can pot and pock all the conclusions everywhere you want it to be something and invite yourself to act like a question is the best way not to separate, expect, project, judge, or reject. So you can ask, what questions can I ask today to grow my business right away? And see what shows up. Yeah? Yes, thank you so much. You're so welcome. It was a great question. Cool. Cool. I have, cool. A, I have a question. Yes, Marisol. <laughs> la, thank la you. Mama. <laughs> <laughs> la mama, right. Thank you. So now, when you said about uh, being not separated from Earth, which we cannot be separated from Earth, uh, I've been asking for a beautiful house in the beach. So I'm not separated from the Earth, right? So I'm just trying to... The question would be, what house is looking for me in the beach? <laughs> or um, who wants to own me? Yes, that's the one. Okay. <laughs> what wants to own me? Okay. Marty Sol, you kind of like to be owned a little bit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so... And this is the thing, my, my friends, when you're not rejecting what's true for you, right? Marisol likes to be owned. I do not like to be owned. <laughs> okay, okay. But am I willing to be owned to create a greater future? Yes and no. Sometimes. Yes. So, so you want to use what's true for you and not reject what's true for you to your advantage. Okay. So, house by the beach. Yes. Who wants to own me? Because the house is going to own you. You are not going to own the house. I know. I know. And then you can ask the, the earth to talk mm -hmm. to you. Okay. And instead of you having to look for the house, what if you ask the I, I couldn't hear the last words. Thank you. Can you repeat them? Yep. If you didn't have to look for the house, uh -huh. what if you asked the house to find you? I, I adore that one. Thank you. <laughs> so my friends, are you asking money to find you? Okay. Are you yes. asking nurturing relationships that would expand your life to find you? Yes. Most of you think you have to go looking for it instead of it coming to find you. And, and I love this because Rita is responding to the business piece and she says, this gave me so much ease. I've noticed that I've changed. So maybe my business wants to change too. My, and this is what I'm going through so much change. Yesterday, I got on a Facebook Live. If any of you were on it, I kind of half-ass apologized because I literally couldn't make sense. I was like... <laughs> I'm making no sense because everything was changing. I couldn't talk to what I was aware of. And so when you're changing, what else are you creating that's inviting change around you? Gracias. So beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, darling. Rita. <laughs> Hi, sweetness. <laughs> Adore you. I adore you too, Marisol. Hi, Catherine. May I have a question? Please. So, what if I have an awareness? I don't even have words for it, but my aware of, and I would like to create change, but how can I be the invitation for others who have no clue what I'm speaking about? So are people going to choose based on what you're talking about or are people going to choose based on your energy? Based on energy, of course. 
So ask for the energy to be louder than your words. Cool. That's great. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Because 95% of communication is not verbal. Most of us think that communication is verbal. So recently I looked at where are the relationships that I have that I'm basing on communication. And then I asked the question, are these relationships based on communication or are they based on contribution? They're based in contribution. And every time I need to define with my words, the contribution, it kills the contribution. Almost all relationships are not based on communication. They're based on energy and contribution. So what energetic contribution can I be to grow my business? And who wants to have that energy? And then you can say, Rita, whatever I need to say, let it match the energy. But like yesterday I got on Facebook Live, my words did not match the energy. Or maybe they did match the energy because it was like blah, 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 blah. Who cares? That's the willingness to fuck it up, not judge that it was wrong, but go, what is that creating in the world? Awesome. Marta says, I couldn't write down all the memes. I love you, Marta. Awesome. So my friends, we just wanted to get on, on board. A lot of you have chosen this series. It's a five call series. We were supposed to start today, but surprise, we're going to start next week. So today is a bonus call. Um, those of you that are signed up for the series will get the recording. If you decide to sign up for the series, you get the recording. If not, this is just a bonus just to have, just for you, just for fun. Um, but if you'd like to join us, we're going to start officially next week, Tuesday at noon. So same time. I want to say hi to everyone. And then hi. I'm going to feed him lunch. <laughs> awesome. So um, yeah, if you'd like to join us, you're welcome to join the five call series. But we just wanted to come on here and kind of give you a little taste because when you're functioning from projections, expectations, separations, judgments, and rejections, you can't really choose what's true for you. You're choosing the, from right or wrong, which doesn't create true choice. And so we're going to go on an adventure. The calls are going to be anywhere from 60 to 90 minutes, depending on when we fry you when you get fried. <laughs> and um, yeah, so those of you that are joining, we'll see you next week. Those of you that would like to join, um, is there French translation? Ah, Severine, hola mi amor. Um, uh, bonjour, I should say. Um, so far we don't have, so we, we're currently requiring six people per class for translation. If you can find six people or you know six people that want to join, we'd love to have you in French. Um, currently, it's only being offered in English, so I apologize for that, but um, yeah. Ah, uh, it's, yes, Severin, if you want to promote it, you can. Yes, you're so cute. I love that. So, my friends, thank you for being here. Thank you for your questions. Thank you to those joining on Facebook Live. You can, and if you're like, I want to join, go to katherinemackintosh.com, hit the button in the shop. And in the shop, you'll see the offer and it's called right or wrong. You'll see tiny, tiny little, it's a red graphic. And in the very corner of the red graphic is this book. So, um, but if you're looking for this book, you won't find the series. It's literally called right or wrong with a question mark. And um, that's the series. So you guys, thank you for joining. Um, you are welcome, Beata. Thank you all for being here. Oh, I forgot. Thank you, Cece. So I am doing call, a one call series tomorrow that's translated in Hungarian and Spanish called WTF, also known as What the Fuck. <laughs> and it's really, um, I actually have no idea what it's about, but the energy behind it is when everything's changing, what do you choose? So like, those what the fuck moments. So it's $35. We do offer, I believe, country pricing. Mañana, si hay traducción mañana en español para, para what the fuck. And there's also translation in Hungarian for what the fuck. So if you guys would like to join, if you'd like to promote, 
um, and maybe Severine, we could have a, a French translator for our next intro calls. So um, we adore you guys. Thank you so much. Um, Severine, if you do translate and you want to reach out, reach out to us because um, we are looking for translators in other countries and other languages who also like to promote. So that's all we got for you guys today. Thank you so much for joining and um, we'll see you next time. Maybe we'll see you tomorrow for WTF. <laughs> Bye for now. Thank you.